Well, Daryl Joseph's life story is not that different from any Tamil blockbuster. He is definitely Halaiva of Des Moines. He is a boy from Chennai who came to the US and built an empire. And when I say empire, I'm not even exaggerating. He has built up a company from ground up, which is now about a $25 million company and still growing. He employs more than 200 plus people. And I had a chance to meet with Daryl. Daryl Joes is an interesting person. If there is money to be made, he has made it. He's everything, but what he's not is modest. If you have it, don't be afraid to show it. And if you don't have it, don't be afraid to say it. And that's the motto Daryl goes by. And that's the genuineness I felt throughout this conversation. Let's get on with it. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, so we have uh, our today's successful immigrant with me, uh, Daryl Joes. Uh, he's been successful in many areas and uh, he has built a company from ground up, which is a very successful company now uh, called American Technology Consulting. Uh, so we are going to talk to him about his journey through that and try to get a feel of uh, what he has gone through and uh, if he can share any insights with us. Uh, so Daryl, you're rich. What's that like? <laughs> I don't know if I'm rich, but yeah, I don't know about uh, being rich. But yeah, okay. it's. Uh, I mean, it's. I don't. I don't look at it that way. Okay. I just look at it the success. That's pretty much how I look at it. Right. So. Um, so what can you tell us about uh, ATC and uh, the company itself? Um, so ATC obviously is a you know um, staffing company. We do a lot of projects. Um, you know. We uh, do a lot of IT related projects uh, mm -hmm. around the country. We have around 200 plus um, employees um, working in different projects in different client sites. So pretty much a technology company, you know, expert, uh, you know, we have a lot of expertise in uh, Java.net, okay. a lot of those areas. You know, we also do a lot of, we did a lot of mobile projects. We don't mm -hmm. do that much anymore. Yeah, that's pretty much what we staff a lot of uh, consultants around the country. So, uh, what can you tell us about the size of uh, American Technology Consulting? How many employees do you employ? And uh, approximately uh, 200 uh, plus employees, okay. and uh, we're, uh, we're around a 25 million dollar company right now. Okay. So, and um, we've been in business for the last uh, eight, 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 eight and a half years at least. I would okay. say eight and a half to nine years. Yeah. Sounds good. So, uh, you know, I would like to get a feel of that journey, how you uh, started uh, with ATC and, yeah. uh, you know, how did you grow into uh, what you guys are today? Yeah, uh, um, so with ATC, the journey started off, you know, when I used to work as a, a consultant. I worked as a business analyst, system analyst, test analyst. Uh, and then um, I it was a nine to five job, you know, um, mm -hmm. something uh, similar to what any consultant would do and uh, I just decided it was too boring for me too slow <laughs> uh, everything was like you know I thought I was wasting my time um, mm -hmm. but I needed the job right I need the job I need the money okay. I made around um, 10 grand a month life yeah. was good yeah 10 grand but then I was like I had to make my life a little more miserable <laughs> so, I, so, so you decided to make so I decided to go into 200 business. people's life miserable. Yeah, like and that too, yeah. So I did not uh, realize that, okay. you know, this business will actually be something serious when okay. I started. I actually um, just started it just for the heck of it, for fun. Okay. So that's the beginning day, and the company is called Grapple Tech. Okay. Um, had to, um, I, I, I was working, uh, you know, I think I was working at uh, Wells Fargo. Okay. Uh, on a six month project um, at that point when I actually registered Grapple Tech. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, <coughs> you know, which eventually, you know, we uh, uh, phased out, uh, you know, and came into ATC. Right okay. now it's uh, it's a new Grapple Tech. So okay. the, the long story short is I had another partner, which was my friend, his name was Jay. Okay. And uh, so he, uh, <coughs> both of us were consultants and uh, we said, okay, let's do this as a business, you know. <laughs> We know right. this game, and game seems easy. You know, right. let's uh, uh, get this started. And so then we was it really easy? Um, uh, not really. So <laughs> <laughs> it's the fact that we thought about uh, starting a business was mm -hmm. very exciting. You know, right. and uh, you know, I talked to a few people. Um, they said, "Oh, there's nothing special about this business." Mm -hmm. And uh, really, my friends who were in business already before me, they said, "There's nothing special. It's just you know, some business. There's no." You know, nothing great. There's no, uh, you know, not not doing anything different than anybody. So, other than the fact that we just wanted to start a staffing company, right? Okay. So, 
and then my friend and we started <coughs> it and last minute he backed out okay so we right before you know when we started off with uh, how much investment that all the stuff <coughs> so and he backed off I, I didn't care just went through the plan okay. and uh, I went with the plan I'm sorry and um, started the company and uh, you know really did not know how to run a staffing company or didn't even know so when he backed out did you uh, question yourself or no. what, what kind of uh, you know psychology you went through at nothing that time. I just said okay if you're not coming that's cool I'm gonna do it so okay because I was one who uh, said okay let's do it and then you know I met him and then actually mm -hmm. we planned it together because I was uh, <coughs> you know staying in his in his okay. house renting a space okay. when I was working as a consultant uh, mm -hmm. when I started off and then so we planned this for like six eight months and then uh, last minute he like he said he had some other commitments blah 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 I said okay no problem I want to do it so I started it started this <coughs> you know um, and um, you know, st had an office, <coughs> rented an office, registered the company, rented an office, okay. and uh, you know had an office in India. Okay. Uh, you know, and um, I had another. Then I wanted. I found another partner in India <coughs> who knew okay. the business. Um, one guy, his name is Pratap. Okay. And you know, he uh, kind of gave me a lot of support okay. in terms of you know understanding the business. You know, I know the consultant side of the business, so. So primarily the, the idea for starting this was, you know, mm -hmm. just to, you know, make sure I get into some kind of business, try some business right. out. And then I knew the, the downsides of consulting and the upsides of consulting and, okay. uh, you know, the bad name that consulting business has. Right. <coughs> you know, no payments, you know, people don't get paid on time, all that stuff. Okay. So uh, keeping all that in mind, I know <coughs> what, what affects a consultant. So started the business, it was very hard. First two years, nothing. You know, and okay. uh, we started in uh, 2009. So when you say nothing, what does that mean? You don't get anything. You just uh, it takes you six months to do one placement. You don't have employees. You know, okay. you work so on you requirements. You are your sole employee. Yeah, sole time. employee. You know, you just don't okay. know the game. You work with other companies. You try to get in the game. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, <coughs> and uh, you know, you just uh, try and pump in money and uh, see, you know keep it alive. All right. Well, so I think I pumped in like five to six thousand dollars a month. Um, I had an office in India, one or two mm -hmm. employees there, and uh, <coughs> for two years, and then 2009 hit, the recession, eight and nine, <coughs> you know, we started right before that, um, uh, 2007 is when we started off. So, couldn't have been a <coughs> worse time than that, I guess. Yeah, it's like, you know, you start uh, a, a <laughs> staffing business, <laughs> right. and everybody's not employing, so, right. so you know, and, you know, I didn't care, just kept pushing forward, you know, with, with it, yeah. and... Uh, in 2009, you know, we got lucky uh, with meeting a client who gave us an opportunity, uh, you know, to work <coughs> with Wells Fargo. Oh. So, um, you know, we didn't work directly, but we worked with a partner here who was implementing a project. Okay. So they gave us an opportunity to fill a Java role. Okay. And then they so how did you back that opportunity? Uh, did you approach <laughs> them? Did you make cold calls? Or no, it's work? actually a local contact in Des Moines, Iowa okay. that, uh, you know, they, I just got introduced. Okay. And they said, hey, we are really looking for people, we just don't have people. Okay. And they started off giving us one, we filled that one, gave us two, we filled that two, hmm. and then uh, eventually we had up to 150 people. And they got hooked. <coughs> and they hmm. got, you know, they worked with three companies and we were one of the biggest companies they worked with. And oh. eventually they started giving most of the business to us. Oh, so, yeah, yeah we, we placed a lot of people uh, through this company um, okay. at Wells Fargo. So this is, uh, you know, <coughs> around 2009, right after the recession. Okay. So, so kind of, you know, that then started in literally, in 2009, I was working as a consultant, or mm -hmm. eight, I think I was working as a consultant. Oh, so you still had your job? I still had my job, I was pumping $6,000 a month. Okay, so you, know, running you, the you were practically saving nothing at that time. I was practically, you yeah, not, forget about stay, saving, I could barely make it. Okay. I had to feed like two or three people in India, I had to run an office here. Okay. <coughs> you know, and I had to pay for all of the other expenses, like, you know, uh, job portals, you had to sign up for Dice Monster. Okay. $6,000 expense, you know. Wow. So, you know, forget so it, barely like So, what was work. your driving factor? I mean, usually people start business to make money and, you know, if you're losing money consistently for yeah. initial period, what, what drives you to keep it alive? I mean, the idea that, you know, the consulting business mm -hmm. is, is a very, you know, big business, right? It's mm -hmm. worth billions of dollars, right? Right. It's not something that's small, and it's <coughs> just you know, the barrier of entry is high just because everybody has their clients, or everybody has right. you know, bunch of employees, you know, or they have contacts, or I don't know how they started, but I know how I started, and right. I thought about it like someone has to has to start somewhere, 
Absolutely. So you know, this is my start. Right. I'll figure it out if if you know, you know, this guy <laughs> uh, if Tom, Dick, and Harry can do it, then yeah, I can do it. I can do it too. Exactly. So it's just I don't know how right now. I have to learn. It took me a year to learn, and the second year, mm -hmm. we started breaking even. <coughs> it took me 24 months to break even. You know that that reminds me of uh, once Steve Jobs told Steve Wozniak that you know even in big companies, actual decision makers are just four people, and in our company as well, just four people are making decisions. <laughs> so we are not that different. <laughs> yeah. So that's how when yeah. they started Apple, he was comparing himself with IBM, which okay. was a big yeah. company at that time. And yeah. he said, even in IBM, there are four people who make decisions, and in Apple also, there are four people who are yeah. making decisions. So, so those key decision makers. Right, it's not yeah. that different. Anyway. No, it's it's not. And uh, yeah, so then we kept pushing, and then uh, eventually we we got a breakthrough <coughs> in 2009 mm -hmm. with uh, you know these consultants at Wells Fargo okay. to another company called Sage, um, and then that actually uh, kind of supercharged our growth, okay, perfect. like dramatically, like, and then I got laid off. and then i was like doing nothing so um so you I, had a lot of time actually to yeah, focus on this yeah i had a lot this. of time yeah so and then i was uh, you know i i was good thing out laid off because we had like seven employees when i okay. was laid off let's rewind and say that again it was good <laughs> thing that you got laid yeah off. because you're making 10000 dollars a month you know you're in your right. comfort zone you, right. and then now your company's breaking even uh -huh. the 10000 dollars is all yours and you know you're not you know not put in a spot you're not mm -hmm. you know on the kind of hot seat or kind of like in a position where you know you're do or die right so so people don't succeed just because of the you know they don't have a do or die attitude right that's right. what i think at least so getting out of that comfort zone may feel like uh, a pain point at that point yeah it feels like it's, yeah it's crazy right it's because, really not yeah it's basically, basically you're shaking up your foundations right that's kind of how how uh, what happened right so got laid off you know shit what do i do right and um, okay. then met this other company and try to like you know ramp up business 12 months from then we were at, like 75 people you know 18 months or 20 24 months from then we were like 150 people like we were number wow. one in Des Moines Iowa you know mm -hmm. for uh, Wells Fargo we had 150 consultants nobody in Des Moines at that point in time in 2009 2010 had okay. <coughs> 150 consultants it's uh, hardcore hustling right so mm -hmm. the good thing that was going for us is the market was you know like in a in deep shit like deep trouble everybody okay. was getting laid off left right and center every day in the news you go to the, go watch the news uh 10000 people are getting laid off 20000 people are getting laid off right okay that's a good thing for us good bad thing for the world right why was it a good thing for you because I'm there was more supply okay right less demand oh right and i was fortunate enough thank god i was fortunate enough to manage to get this customer you know that had you know this project in Wells Fargo <laughs> you know um that really helped supercharge our growth at that point at the most critical point okay right? my day started at 8 a.m. in the morning okay you know and ended at 2 a.m. wow interviews so so it's not just hustle it's a lot of hard work it's a lot of hard work a lot of hustle a lot of hard work yeah. you know and it's in you know i remember for the last 4 years between 2009 and 2013 mm -hmm. you know uh to the end of 2014 uh, mid of 2014 we used to interview on every holiday mm -hmm. you know christmas new year easter think of any holidays we had interviews on those days and then we had guest houses where, we, where people we brought them into town the whole world around us was crumbling right with the uh, right. financial meltdown and this is only the place they had to go they had now no choice so we brought in like you know 50 uh, 100 families at least 100 150 families uh, uh, you literally brought 100 plus families uh, in this area for to work on the project yeah so i do you think the mayor should give you the key to the city no <laughs> i don't think he needs to give me anything but yeah we literally brought hundreds of uh, people from okay. all over the country <clears throat> to Des Moines Iowa so and this is when the economic times were not yeah, was so friendly yeah not friendly and uh, we literally had to tell explain to them where this place is, where Des Moines Iowa was okay. you know and it's really not in the middle of cornfields <laughs> right right and uh, really you know it's civilized and there's no animals right. you know grazing around you know and it's <laughs> <laughs> and winter's not that bad did know? people actually ask you these yes, questions yes literally asked us okay. those questions and we literally had answers i actually typed out answers for all my sales guys you know okay. at that point we had two but sometimes mm -hmm. you know 
have to send them the answers and questions, you know, okay. frequently asked questions. Look where, where you can get uh, places to stay, rents, okay. uh, you know. And most people were, you know, like uh, uh, surprised that the rents were so low. Back then it was like you can get a two bedroom condo or, a or an apartment for seven fifty eight hundred dollars <coughs> Really? Yeah. Now it's like, you know, $200, $300 more. Okay, so it but doesn't it's change not much. changed much just because of supply and demand. But um, it was, and they were attracted, uh, attracted by, you know, the billing rates and right. the salaries and uh, where. So pretty you much did negotiate good rates for them? With yes, the yes. They did make, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. So salaries were almost the same. You know, okay. they were no different than California and New York. And okay. at that point in time, you know, getting a job itself was a big deal, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and yeah, so yeah, we literally had to convince okay. them. You have to tell them that this is literally not, you know, in the middle of the cornfields. You know, so yours is a pretty much a story of hustle and a lot of hard work, as yeah. I can see. Uh, yeah. What now? I would like to take this interview a little bit towards, uh, you know, your uh, childhood and where you grew up and how did you come to this country. So yeah. uh, where are you originally from? I was born in Chennai, India. Okay. So and uh, grew up uh, all my life in India okay. until I was. Uh, 21 mm -hmm. when I finished my degree in engineering mm -hmm. and then I moved to Malaysia okay. and uh, you know I worked in Malaysia for a couple of years I think like four years three and a half four years okay. <coughs> and then I came to the United States and okay. uh, you know found a job and uh, you know came to Des Moines and right. then got bored <laughs> and started uh, so I'm know. seeing God bored as a theme around here yes. in your story I, so, yeah, so how many times in your life have you actually got bored and uh, because of that you've changed something yeah it's, uh, so I've had uh, two startups okay. you know like the uh, first one is was <laughs> Grapno um, mm -hmm. the, the initial startup that okay. you know that that we did like Grapno I think we did around 20 million dollars okay. and then ATC was a complete new setup Right. Uh, so that is now, you know, that's like a tw that came up to like a twenty-five million dollar company, mm -hmm. and then I did iApps, which was a mobile app company, okay. um, complete failure, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> so you had to get slapped in your face once, right? <laughs> right, <laughs> so absolutely. Just because you're in this, uh, oh, okay, I have two successful companies, I should have a third one, right? Right. You're you deserve and, it, and it right? Didn't work that way. It definitely doesn't work that way, right? So, okay. I mean, just. Just basically everything was wrong, right? The fundamental setup of you, who you <coughs> partner with. You know, obviously it's a mobile app company. We build mobile apps. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more, you know, oh, okay, the mobile app business is hot. Let's do something about it. You know, it doesn't work that way. So okay. you need good partners. You need, a, right. you know, a development team. You need to know, you need to have, you know, someone who has a good roadmap and, you know, Absolutely. revenue. So bad business, but good uh, first product startup that failed. Like okay. miserable. So, what was your product with iApps? We had a bunch of uh, you know apps that we built for you know we had the the major product we had was called ProShare where we had multiple sign-on. This is in 2000, uh, I think 10 okay. or 11 maybe. I think 11. Right. So, um, where you could actually it's called ProShare. It was called ProShare, mm -hmm. and it was fairly it's a nice product there. So we had all these uh, social media <laughs> apps. So you had one app and you had single sign-on into all these apps. Okay. You know, so now there's a lot of tools like that, right? right? But back then there was nothing. Okay. It's yeah. just that we had horrible so marketing techniques. Okay. You know, product was not uh, completely uh, you know uh, defect-free. Okay. The thing uh, crashed every five seconds. Okay. You know, and we just couldn't fix it, and we didn't do enough testing. So. Now so I know. So this. you just discovered few more ways of failing, I guess. Yes, that's yes. That's the way to look at it. I because guess. this, uh, right? You know, the business I am in right now is a services business, ATC right. or mm -hmm. Grapnel is a services business. Product business is a whole different ballgame. So, and then I uh, literally uh, one day I woke up and said, "Okay, I'm enough with, is enough, right? This product business. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, you know shut this down and let's focus on what I have." So I gave it away to my friends, and they took it away, and they. Two partners. They actually uh, went and started other product companies. Okay. I have no idea where they are right right now with their products, but okay. uh, fairly decent, uh, you know, uh, starts they had, chances they had. And okay. I went into another product company with my childhood friend, okay. Asif, and mm -hmm. uh, he. We started Reduce Data. <coughs> I co-founded right. a company with him. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's called Reduce. It's, a, it's an ad platform, programmatic okay. by ad tech. It's called and ad tech industry. Data. Um, yeah, we use big data technology and stuff. It's okay. more like, you know, a lot of analytics in, uh, you know, with the ads, but more really, uh, it's called RTB. Uh, okay. So, real-time bidding, uh, some kind of uh, display ads, you know. Okay. So, Understood. we did that, went and sold it to Snapdeal India, 
okay. and we got acquired in 2015. So that was so that was a so three that was a successful venture. Yes, that was a successful. We had a positive exit. So someone okay. actually bought our crap. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I don't think Snapdeal would like to know that. No, nah, in they, terms they of like what, what what I me meant by that was okay. with the product business, right? Right. So in any business, uh -huh. when you exit, that mm -hmm. means you build something and someone actually paid money to buy your stuff. Right. That's way better. You know, that's why product businesses have like 10x, 30x, 20x exits. Absolutely. Versus the services, you know, if someone ought to buy ATC, you won't get 20, 30x. Right. It's probably two, three x, right? Makes so sense. that's kind of how it works in, in the world. So, so when I say someone bought a crap, is someone <laughs> we built something and someone decided someone this is going to be useful it. for them. And actually, uh, you know, when Sna Snap acquired, you know, they actually made uh, five, ten times, uh, uh, or maybe four times whatever they bought it bought it for. Yeah. So, so it, they it already turned out to be a win-win situation for them. Yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of you. They don't buy something that uh, you know. That's they're not gonna, gonna fail. Yeah. They, they don't actually buy crap. Crap. As yes. They don't technically crap. buy crap, but I'm <laughs> right. just saying, you know, I'm just uh, saying that whatever we built is, you know, bought our crap. Kind of Absolutely. Deal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Makes sense. So. All right. So, uh, you know, since you have built, uh, say, two to three successful ventures as such, three. what can you uh, share with us uh, about, you know, how to build a successful venture? If I had to, if I asked you to describe in, let's say, a couple of sentences, what would your message be? Um, I mean, uh, honestly, I never thought about it like that. Uh, I, all I, I know what I did. I mean, first identify an opportunity. I mean, mm -hmm. This is uh, something that I say is, you know, if someone else is doing it, you know, there's two, two types of business. So either you find something new that nobody knows about and you have something called a product market fit. Right. You know, we learned it the hard way, uh, you know, while I did my startups, you know, um, you know, product startups. It's called product market fit where you need to find a product and you need to actually know that your crap is something that interests people. Right. right. So what do you build is your own crap. So you've got to have a market for it. You have to have a market for it, right? right? And the other business is like a service industry, right? Mm -hmm. Like if ABC are doing and ABC is successful in it, then like ATC or Grapnel, how I started, like everybody had a starting company, uh, start right. a, I mean a staffing company. Right. Why would I start another one? Because I know the market is huge and everybody else is doing it. Right. If you know ABC is doing it, I can do it too. Right. That's already a validated industry. Now, mm -hmm. the risky part is when you build your own product and you don't know the market and you assume the market's great and then you go ahead with your product and spend hundreds of thousand dollars and then, then you get something like iApps where you have a failed startup. All right. You know, so it's, it's uh, what I would say is understand your product, understand mm -hmm. your market, mm -hmm. and then, you know, um, get some advisors, you know, right. um, to advise you if, if possible. If not, just, you know, put a lot of effort and you should you know know that anymore you should uh, you don't have to have you know background mm -hmm. none of the startups i had or any of the companies i started i didn't have the background you know okay. of running a business okay. in that industry so the partners you chose were not really people who actually had any background not any yeah but in the product industry is very important right not every industry one person needs to know but if you are i i was part of the marketing and the sales in in, mm -hmm. in reduced data so I didn't have a background. I went and learned it, right? But okay. the person who built the you know core platform had, you know, programming background, right? Okay. So and uh, so someone has to be expert in ex the in, in in yeah building the product, right? right. Uh, able to build, you know, the software or the tool or the platform. So or so you would say do what you understand best. Yes, do what you yeah what you understand. I'm I'm good at like managing stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I can manage hundred people at the same time or five hundred people. I have no problem. I can hustle right. through it and manage to them. Easily, no problem. Management, you know, uh, people skills, management, financial. You know, I work. I can crunch numbers day in and day out. That's all I do. Like now, I had. I, I'm also into you marketing. You just make it sound so easy, man. I know it's it's not. It's not what I've been doing this for ten years, right? So, right. <laughs> so go back ten years. You know, I probably do know twenty percent of what I know right now. So, yeah. It's just it 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 is uh, not hard. I can tell you that it's not hard as. Uh, yeah, I mean, if one person can do it, other can do it. Yeah, it's it. so just a matter that's of... That's your philosophy. Yes, right? yeah, that's what I think, you know. Okay. Just, um, you know, sit down and study. I still study marketing. I do a lot of marketing. Okay. You know, I study growth hacking. You know, how do you, like, you know, explode your, you know, inbound leads? You know, how do you make people buy your products? You know, why would right. they buy your products? So, it's it's a lot, right? Marketing yeah. is not just display ads anymore. So Absolutely. It's more than that. So, yeah, yeah so just... Uh, and then, you know, this uh, <laughs> obviously, like I said, I don't know 
the one line statement to say how to build a successful business all i know is you know this it takes hard work a lot of you know understanding market i mean there know. is no one formula for yeah no one formula yeah. and uh, you know never will be a one formula thing so uh, daryl i would like to uh, swerve this interview a little bit towards the immigrant part of it uh, so you came from chennai and uh, you then went to malaysia you came to the us what was that journey like and what can you tell me uh, about your thoughts on what american dream is um and do you still believe in it i mean um i i never wanted to come to america okay. never even thought about coming to america so mm -hmm. honestly i was very happy in malaysia and then you know i just had you know i got married mm -hmm. you know in 2005 and then i came to the united states so i i came here by accident Okay. You know, so so it wasn't uh, it was it never was, your plan. No, no, never, never even even when I was in India. Yeah, most people going to the U.S. applying all these things. Mm -hmm. You know, to come to the U.S. I tried to go to the U.K. Okay. And now the U.S. was not even my radar. Okay. And then uh, things didn't work out for the U.K. Um, so I just went to Malaysia because my friends had companies there, so okay. they offered me a job. That's how I went. Okay. So. Yeah, so I mean, American so dream. So, did you meet your wife in Malaysia then? Yeah, we okay. we met online, and uh, sh you know, then we okay. met in Malaysia, and uh, yes. And I I guess online dating was a big taboo back then. I you know, I was the first time I even went online. <laughs> oh, really? So <laughs> that was your first date? Uh, yeah. Ever online? First, yeah, first. Uh, and week. You found your wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, back then it was <laughs> not nothing. Uh, that's very I don't know. Like somebody told me, and that's how I went. Okay. So it's kind of, uh, and after that I didn't go okay. online. <laughs> so, <laughs> awesome. but yeah, it's it's a completely uh, different uh, world back then. You know, okay. literally I didn't even know much about this online whole online community. Nothing. It's very okay. disconnected. Right. So, um, so um, so is it a fair statement to call you Thalaiwa, <laughs> coming from <laughs> no. Chennai and conquering <laughs> right. the business world uh, out here? Not even, not even that, not even close. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> you can say whatever you want. But yeah, I'm not even close. Uh, I mean, you clearly have the looks of Thalaiwa. That much I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I look like a thug. So, yes. Yeah, I'll you keep that. calling yourself a thug. <laughs> so w w what's that about? I don't know. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> So that's what most people think I am, <laughs> at least by the looks, until they talk to me and get to know me, right? right. So <laughs> then they're like, oh, okay, he's not so bad. He just looks scary. No, I didn't think you were bad or scary. Yeah, or you know me, so you're biased. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, right. so not the same things. All right, perfect. And uh, one last uh, question. Uh, so if I ask you, what is the most important thing in your life at this point, what would that be? The most important uh, thing in my life... Uh, I I mean obviously my kids you know is the most important asset other than that you know I think uh, health itself and you know having you know an, a peaceful life that's uh, that's what you value the most yeah that's yeah. pretty much it and I don't that's value. what you work towards I yeah I've, uh, I've never ever worked towards money I've never like <coughs> you know um, asked uh, oh I need so much or I want so much like never ever so, in, uh, in, I, from the time I can remember, <laughs> so I know you know this is something I always tell, right? I kind of mentor <laughs> certain people, mm -hmm. you know, with business, startup businesses, okay. friends, you know, people I meet off the street sometimes. Right. You know, I socialize a lot, okay. so I go out. I I socialize a lot, a ton, right? Literally. So, um, I mentor a lot of people. So when they say, oh, you know, the what is? I ask them the question like, what is your driving factor? The first thing they say, I want money. Like that, that itself is like kills it. That's a turn off. That's it. It just kills it for me. Like, oh my God, you know, money is never should be a driving factor. Yeah, money is great, right? But if your driving factor is always money, right, you're always going to be disappointed. Not, yeah, you know, it's, it's not. Someone else is going to have more than you always. Yeah, someone else is going to have more than you, you know, and, you know, and when I do interviews, I'll ask them, like freshers, <laughs> I ask them, or, you know, new people, graduates, you know. If I, when I'm doing an interview, I ask them, okay, what, what is it? And they say, oh, I need to make X amount of dollars. That itself is, you're locked your head into, I need to make a million dollars or half a million dollars or 200,000. So, so the, what you're telling yourself is, oh, this is what I want to make. And that itself, you know, is only going to get them so far, at least in my head. Right. right. So you put a number to your success. For me, you know, your success, so once you reach the 200,000, you think you, ach you achieve your success and it's game over. 
Right. Okay. So your progress so, kind of stops. Yeah, over. unintentionally you're right. putting a number, you know, to your success. For me, I I never ever said, oh, I need to make a million dollars, or I need to, you know, make uh, you know five million dollars, right? Right. So it's it's I've never said that, <coughs> and never will, and uh, nobody ever knows <laughs> what I do <laughs> usually when I go out and I talk to people. So they think I'm crazy. Yeah. So yeah, because I remember when I asked you, uh, you know, I wanted to do an interview with you since I think uh, you know you fit the category of successful immigrants. <laughs> I've been interviewing. Your answer to me was, uh, "Why me, man? I'm just a local thug." <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "Okay, I should start with that." But I completely forgot that I had to use that line. Oh to start my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I'm, that's what I really think. I'm just, you know, everybody's normal, um, right. a normal human being, right? So absolutely. Yeah. So for me, success is what drives me really. It, it's like uh, all something that always drives me. I don't <laughs> care. Like I help a lot of friends to a level where I do a lot more. Then anybody will mentor them, like actually go in and actually, you know, right. run their business for them, and then you know, let it go. Yeah. So not even expecting anything. So cool. Uh, so let's end this with a quick rapid fire round. Okay. So I'll say a word, and you say the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. No, no thinking allowed. Uh, success. Um. No thinking. It <laughs> 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 just threw me off with success. I don't know. Success, uh, you know, Bill Gates. Money. Uh, money. Uh, Rajnikant. People. <laughs> People. Oh, crap. I'm so crap, horrible. Crap. <laughs> crap. That sounds about right. It sums up. People. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go with crap. So. All right. Uh, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> would you like to uh, add any concluding comment? Uh, no, not, no, I have no comments. Any uh, tip for our viewers? Um, yeah, I mean, so tip for success is like say, again, like don't look at the money, you know, look at success. You know, that's that's something should, that should always drive you. Mm -hmm. Never, you know, dollar amounts. Don't you know limit yourself to dollar amounts or certain things. I need to get this. Just you know, have this success. Once you tasted it. Mm -hmm. You will never like not want to taste it again, and that's what drives me every time. Right. Like literally, I'm starting something new right now. There's no reason I don't. At some point, the dollars make no sense, right? Absolutely. It's just a, it's just a number. Another zero and another zero at the end, right? So right. it makes no sense. But the success is once you taste it, you all constantly want to taste it. So chase after success, everything else will follow. Is okay. money is a byproduct. All right. Uh, so thank you, Daryl, for doing this and uh, look forward thank to seeing you. you again and wish you all the best with all your successes to come thank and you. even more.